what the Church of Scientology is so afraid of. This, this is SPTV. Lily. Mikey. Hi. Hi, You're honey. Back. We're back. We I am are. back with a lopsided bun today. Mike and I were laughing. But I'm going to blame true. my still being sick. There you go. Well, that's a good that's a good excuse. But as I was saying, yeah. it doesn't really matter. You think it matters if it's dead center. I don't think it matters either way. Like, okay. My part isn't in the center of my head. It's like on one side. So, you know. Thank you, Mikey. <laughs> okay. So today mm -hmm. we're going to talk about something that we mentioned in one of our earlier episodes and said, look, we should probably devote yeah. more time to this, which is the subject of being a victim in Scientology. And so we're going to devote, in fact, this whole episode to this subject because there is a lot to unpack here. And as I, uh, as I titled this, um, in Scientology, victim is a dirty word. Mm -hmm. it, it really is. And I, I don't think, Lee, that people really grasp how encompassing this, this concept of victim is bad really is. It, it sort of perm permeates all of the the fundamental principles upon which Scientology is based. It, Correct. It's like, a, it's like a foundational thing. Victim is bad <laughs> under any circumstances. Correct. Um, if you want me to elaborate just a little bit before you get into the, the policies oh. of it, but as you are raised in Scientology from a very early age, you are taught that anything that happens to you uh, happens to you because you have either committed a sin in this lifetime. Now, when I say sin, I mean a Scientology sin. So that could mean, um, you know, very different things in the real world, right? And then, right. so you know, talking to your mother, who Scientology told you you shouldn't be talking to, would be considered a sin. So you just know that we're we're going by very different measures of morality here. And the Scientology's bar is very low uh, for that, for normal people. Um, so it, so going back to what I, I started with, which is you're taught that anything that happens to you happens for a reason. So if as a uh, an older Scientologist, a young Scientologist, it doesn't matter if you're a civilian Scientologist or a Sea Org member, if something happens to you, let's say you get into a car accident, the first thing that's done is you are given an interview by Scientology on a meter, and they look for uh, the obvious, which is, have you gone on the internet? Have you talked to anybody who's uh, opposing Scientology? And then, you're get, then you get sent to the ethics department, which is the Scientology punish department, and there they will basically ask you, what did you do to receive the car accident? Even if you say, I was like fucking sitting there. I mean, I was at a red light. What can I be doing? I was sitting at a red light. They will break it down. Their technology is so that you cannot get out of it until you say, well, I was there. I could own that part that I might have been at the wrong place at the wrong time, and it's my responsibility, ultimately. Um, I don't know how else to explain it in the most simple of terms, Mike. Well, it, it's, so, it's sort of this idea of karma perverted. Correct. In other words, if you beat someone in the head with a baseball bat, you're going to get beat in the head with a baseball bat. Mm -hmm. And the cause of you being beaten in the head with a baseball bat is the fact that you beat someone else in the head with a baseball bat. Mm -hmm. um, and that is this fundamental concept of uh, you're responsible for your own condition. And there is this, this idea in Scientology that anything bad that happens to you, you must have done something similar yourself to have what the Scientology term is, pulled it in. 
So, Meaning, Mike, let's, let's give an example of that. Yeah. So let's say you're my Scientology or even my father, my uncle, my, my friend, right? And I say to you that I have been sexually assaulted by another Scientologist. Um, and now Mike's view and all Scientologists' view is that I am being critical. Now, the word critical, again, is used in a different way in Scientology. <clears throat> it is considered that I would be complaining right? It's called natter, that I would be nattering about whoever just assaulted me, right? If, yet, if they were a Scientologist in good standing, yes. Correct. Absolutely. You would say to me what, Mike? Uh, <laughs> um, I'm trying to figure out how to say that. The way that Scientology would say it, do you have a similar overt of your own? Meaning well, no. Well, wait, yeah, we'll, we'll go through that at another time. We don't need to explain the terms yet, Mike. Okay. So I would ask you mm -hmm. when you had sexually assaulted someone. Well, I have never done that, Mike, because I'm a female and I don't have a penis. And so I have not done what was done to me. Right. Well, I want you to take another look at that. I want you to actually look carefully and see okay. if there is any similar sort of activity that you may have been engaged in that is like what you are complaining about. Okay, so then now Mike is referring to then we I would be on the lie detector, the lie detector, the Scientology e-meter at this point. Mike would be staring at the dial of the <laughs> e-meter and any thought that I would have, Mike would say that there. What is that? And I'd be like, oh, I don't know. I'm picturing myself as a man, maybe in another lifetime. Great. That's it. That's it. Then he would take me through a series of what did I do? When did I do? How did I do it? It's a basic form of questions that Scientologists must ask in these situations. And this basically, this routine that Mike and I are going through with you is to prove that I have done what was done to me in another lifetime. And until Mike gets all the times that I have hurt another in this lifetime, last lifetime, thousands, millions, quadrillions of lifetimes ago. Am I exaggerating, Mike? Mm -mm. Okay. Well, I come to realize as a Scientologist that I pulled it in. That ultimately the reason why what happened to me today was kind of deserved because I right. had done it. Right. And that's exactly. the way every incident in Scientology is dealt with when you are calling yourself a victim. The word victim, like Mike said, is like the scarlet letter, right? I mean, you were yes, labeling that's yourself a, a piece of shit. You were labeling yep. yourself, and Scientologists believe that you are a piece of shit that you would ever say that you were a victim when you, in fact, caused it. Right. Yeah. That's exactly right. And, yeah. and all of this is so relevant because we have been talking a lot about the Masterson case and the victims of Danny Masterson, and they truly are victims. But in the world of Scientology, that means that they have not taken responsibility for what they did. They have not taken responsibility for the terrible things that they have done to result in anything that they are now complaining about. And right. that is how every Scientologist looks at victims. And vic it's not just victims of sexual assault, it's victims of mistreatment. It's being abused. It's having people steal your money. It's having a car accident. It's anything mm -hmm. that you believe has happened to you that is bad mm -hmm. is in the in the view of Scientology looked at as see this guy is dramatizing this mm -hmm. person is simply acting out these terrible things that happen to them because they need to unburden themselves and mm -hmm. they need to get unburdened their own horrible actions 
because only through that will they uh, get relief. And when you have a, a an approach to things like that, when you get someone who walks into a Scientology organization and says, um, this person did this bad thing to me, no matter what it is, they know that what is going to happen to them is they're going to be interrogated about what they did. Correct. If the person they are complaining about or the person they are talking about is someone who is in the C organization or a celebrity or a Scientologist in good standing or someone who gives a lot of money to Scientology, they've got absolutely no hope, no rights, no compassion, no mm -hmm. sense of, oh my God, we need to find out what's going on here. Just as mm -hmm. Leah said, they are treated as um, troublemakers. Mm -hmm. This person has come to stir up trouble. As a matter of fact, Mike, um, I don't know if you feel that this relates, but I feel like it does. Anytime I have in a Scientology session said such and such, you know, Scientologist did blah, blah, blah. I was shown a reference of, are you getting off somebody else's transgressions? And <laughs> now we're turning our attention to you. So you as a Scientologist feel you're doing the right thing by reporting activities that A, are illegal, B, you are a victim of, or C, uh, um, crimes committed against other people that you're aware of because you were a, a Scientology auditor or, you know, a Scientology ethics officer. And you're saying to another employee of Scientology, this person did this. I know about it, blah, blah. They will show you that you, because you're now bringing it up and complaining, you're nattering about another, they're going to ask you what we just did. What have yes. you done similar? No, I haven't right. done anything similar. I'm just telling you, you guys should know. I don't know what you're going to do with the information, but you should definitely know that blah, 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 did blah, 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 to blah, blah, blah. And you know, just telling you it's illegal, right? What you're saying is it gets turned on the person reporting it. Absolutely. And, yeah. and you know, it. it's not just that that is what happens. It's also that every Scientologist knows that that's what happens. Yeah. So they are reluctant. Isn't it called, isn't it called a discreditable uh, overt or give, giving up a dis? What is that called, Mike? Isn't that, do you know that policy where it says like giving up of another, uh, somebody in good standing? Is that what it's called? I don't know. It's, you know, getting off others' withholds is what the. Yeah, I, I'll have to find it for you, but I know because I know I'm right. But, um, you but sorry. Yeah. I know you sorry. slipped in a blah, blah, blah there too. I noticed that. No, Mikey, I am sorry I cut you off because I, I thought I had a specific policy right on the top of my head, but I don't go. I know that happens. Yes, you're right. That happens frequently. But, yeah. but I, I was going to say, Leah, that, that, this has great impact on whether people will yes. actually report things mm -hmm. because they know what's going to happen. Correct. So They're they don't punished. report them. It takes right. a lot of courage to report something that has happened, particularly when it concerns a Sea Org member or yes. a celebrity or yes. someone who gives a lot of money to Scientology to make any statement about what that person is doing because every person in Scientology knows exactly what's going to happen to them when they do so. The focus will be turned on them. And that's, they will absolutely. become the target. Absolutely. And that's what's so terrible about this victim-blaming, victim-shaming, victim... Blaming, victim, shaming, victim um, uh, culture that exists in Scientology. It, mm -hmm. It's not just 
like I'm trying to stress that it's not just uh, a sort of a passing thing or something that happens some of the time or that, you know, you yeah. may hear this occur. No, no it's, it's, found, it's, found, it's one of the staples. It's one of the staples yes. that you learn very early on um, in Scientology. And like I said, I, I brought up, uh, you know, children because it's, it's taught very early on. Absolutely. Um, you know, when a child hurts themselves, you know, a Scientology parent will say, what did you do for that to happen to you? So they get conditioned very early on. Uh, and this is just one piece of the conditioning, right, that we're talking about. Right. There's many levels of conditioning, but they're taught immediately that they did something to have fallen off their right. bike. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Th this, yeah. this concept is pervasive in Scientology. Correct. Uh, and Let, Sarah, one more thing I just wanted to add, yeah. Mike, because you were talking about the Danny Masterson trial. And yeah. um, there was a, so many moments that were so very emotional for me um, as, a, as a witness there, right? As kind of watching what was happening. <clears throat> um, it was very uh, traumatic for uh, the Jane Doe's, clearly. And um, at one point, it was after sentencing, one of the Jane Doe's said to me, do you think now that they'll, like, change their antagonism towards mm -hmm. us? And it was so innocent, because I have thought that, like, I had those thoughts seeing my former friends sit on the other side of the courtroom, right? We right. once shared... Um, and, and I'm sure this was very weird for you, Mike, when this first happened, when you saw your former friends that were in the hole with you, who were beaten with you, um, who were abused with you, being held prisoner with you, who now looked at you and calling you a liar. And you're like, what you, we were there together. What are you <laughs> like? What do you, you know, it's, it's such an, it's it's a very odd um, experience. I, I really can't explain it because I have never really experienced this in my life. Having family, former friends look at me like I'm the devil with different eyes. You know, it's kind of, it's just weird. It's like you go from, you know, their best friend, their family member to this icy, like, yep. nun. You're like, where are where are you, the person that I knew? Where right. are you? And I knew what she was saying when she said that. It's it's almost the 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 innocence in us is still there, even though we're you know all old, you know. But it it you kind of regress back to a place of like the simplicity of goodness, right? Like, no, now you see, right? Now you see, you know that I'm not you know that this happened. And I just looked at her like, cause I was so sad because I knew what she was feeling on top of what she had been through for 20 right. years. And then the seven years of this. Right. And I said, they always knew you were telling the truth. That's the difference. You have to understand with Scientologists. They know all know that we're all telling the truth. That's right. not their problem. It's that we're telling the truth is the problem. Because behind the scenes, you know the conversations, Mike, because you've had them. Where it's like, yeah, well, was she raped? Well, yeah, she was raped. But, I mean, A, she pulled it in. And B, why would she tell the world? Like, we have to right. handle this internally. Right. Yeah. I, I, and it always goes back to that what's the greatest good for the greatest number of dynamics. And right. it's always whatever's good for Scientology uh, right. and what, or their twisted view of what's good for Scientology, which well, is never Scientology to have the flat. You don't talk about these things in the outside world. You certainly don't report it to the police. You take responsibility for what had happened to you, whether yep. it's the R word, the M word, beatings, being, you know, your money taken from you, your family destroyed, you know, these, like, that was, that was probably the main thing that people would say to other people who were not yet fully out. 
Like, why are you calling uh, Leah Remini and Mike Rinder this? Why are you calling her a C word? Why are you calling, why are you accusing Mike of these heinous acts? And their response is, they should have handled everything internally. So it was never like what we were saying, because a lot of them don't right. even know what we're saying, as you can tell by the same tweets and everything that go out. Like what? And we've begged Scientologists, please come on to any show that we're doing, any podcast. Please tell us what you're you're accusing us of. What what are we lying about? Please just answer that one question. What what right. is it that you're disputing? None of them will answer that because none of them actually care. What they care about is that we're talking. That Correct. we're telling the truth when we should have handled it while we were in, Mike. You should have handled David Miscavige while you were in. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> there, was just, <laughs> there was just one thought, Leah, that I wanted yeah. to also mention. This concept of uh, victim is applies across the board in Scientology, except for L. Ron Hubbard and David Miscavige. When L. Ron Hubbard was around, he was the victim of conspiracies, of government plots, of people who were trying to destroy him, of the people around him, his subordinates. Yeah. They were all trying to uh, mess him up in some way. And the yeah. same thing exists with David Miscavige today yeah. that he is somehow immune from the idea that he is a victim and oh, yeah, should sure. be getting off his own acts. When he complains about, mm -hmm. you know, this is going on and these people are doing this to me and they, the court is uh, has yeah. made a ruling that's wrong, and I'm the victim of all of this. It's perfectly okay for him to be a victim. Everybody no, else, though. Of course. Everybody not only has to pay, literally and figuratively, for what they've done. Right. But not, yes. And also, Mike, to add to what you just said, the the viewpoints of Scientologists when something happens to them, for example, somebody's put in prison in Scientology or your family is affected by your own criminal activities or the criminal activities of your church. It is seen as us, the bad people of the world, are only this is only happening to them because they're so successful. <laughs> and <laughs> the squirrel, they call us squirrels, right? The squirrels are screaming and attacking because Scientology is doing so well. Right. Well, if Scientology and Scientologists are doing so well, why do they care so much about what we do and say? Uh, <laughs> Leah, I know. I, I put a thing on my blog yesterday about this crazy uh, tweet that someone did saying, Scientology, we're not intimidated by Mike Rinder and Leah Remini. Good. Okay. They're, they're a multi-billion dollar organization that supposedly has millions of people all over the world, more than 11,000 organizations. Mm -hmm. They have all of the technology to solve all of mankind's problems, and they're not intimidated, and they feel they have to say that? That we're not intimidated by you? This is like, you know... The, it it's it's pay it's not David and Goliath, it's yeah. David and the the miniature, I mean miniature David and Goliath. This mm -hmm. is like so inverted. This mm -hmm. idea of who's who's the who's the aggressor and who's the 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 you know bully and who's. Like, Who's the other side of that equation? It's strange. It's it would like, be one thing. It would be one thing if it was some random, you know, like Scientologist who's like, I don't like what you're saying about my, you know, religion, blah, blah, blah. But this is all day, all night, millions and millions of dollars. This has been happening since 1968 uh, of Scientology in the business of going after journalists, you know, moms, dads, it doesn't matter. 
this is 99.9% uh, .9 of Scientology's focus is silencing people who are talking about Scientology. Right. Or, so, I mean, so, and I, and I would just refer everybody to an L. Ron Hubbard policy called Stature. And I'll, I'll, will, uh, have Stature. you not read that? Yeah. Have you not read that? No. What? No. Uh, I'm almost I'm it tempted. down. I'm almost tempted to go and get it, Mike. I'm writing it down. I'll, I will find it or you can send it to me. We'll, 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 um, add that in here somewhere. Okay. We'll, we'll get it and, and add it in before we. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, that, that kind of explains really how Scientology views people who are speaking out against it. And um, it's very evident. So yes, all day, all night, they can say, you know, we're not bothered. You know, we're pieces of shit. We're insignificant. All they want. If, if that were true, why bother? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I had a few things that I wanted to, uh, a few references from Mr. Hubbard. Mm -hmm. that I wanted to uh, use and show here so that people understand that we're not just making this up, but this is really comes from the fundamental principles of Scientology. Mm -hmm. And the first is I want to show Hubbard's tone scale. And the tone scale is this thing that he invented and put it in his second book called Science of Survival. And it is a scale of surviving. And it is a, a sort of fundamental to all of Scientology that Scientology is supposed to move people up this tone scale to greater and greater levels of survival. And this tone scale actually goes... Um, well, it's very odd. It goes from body death at zero up to uh, serenity of beingness at 40. It actually goes below zero, um, but I'm not. we're not even going to get into that. No, but, but the basic, Mike, is that L. Ron Hubbard teaches that there's worse things to be than dead. Right, exactly. That great... I'm going to use that in the future to explain this minus tone scale. Okay, good. It's like weird. No, it's Mike, just, I had to literally say to one of my Scientology supervisors when I was the first learning the tone scale, you know, at an early age, because it's a mandatory, um, like, why, like, how would I be in a tone if I don't have a body, like, to be in a tone, <laughs> right? Like, exactly. Like, how they, do you spot you know, your chronic, chronic tone there? Right. How, yeah. how could I be in a bad mood if I have no body to show that I was in a bad mood? You know, right, exactly. Or angry. How can I show anger if I don't have a body? Right. So, was, so, so basically, uh, yes, that's the thought that there's no right. there's worse things than than death to a Scientologist, and one of that, one of those levels is. I was letting you take the the the. <laughs> I know, but it's yeah. actually at point one. It's not oh, minus. It's okay. But Go. in any event. Yeah. All Scientology, uh, the theory of Scientology auditing, which is Scientology counseling, is no, all it's based. Not mostly counseling, Mike. It's not even uh, remotely close to counseling. Find another word, please. <laughs> um, Scientology pseudo, pseudo barbaric obsolete antiquated 1950s regression therapy <laughs> <laughs> okay so but but nevertheless the entire theory of everything you do in scientology is intended to raise you on this scale because yeah. if you, and i'm going to pull it up on the screen now so we can start actually talking about I'm not sure that you're going to be able to read it too easily. There'll be a link that we'll have, but you can see this tone scale. It goes from zero at the bottom, which says body death, 
and then up to 40.0, which is serenity of beingness. Hubbard says that everything below 2.0 on this tone scale, which you can see is in blue and is antagonism. Everything below that is not surviving. Anything above it is surviving, but you have to get like a ways up before you start surviving well. But way yeah, and, down and, just, and the very overall thing of this is like Scientologists use this tone scale as like to to figure out how they should be like if they should marry the person. Like they're like, right. you know, where are they at on the tone scale? You know, or like they'll say, oh, um, like this was said to me by my Scientology handler once. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, when I said friends of mine were having a hard time and Shane Woodruff said, who gives a shit? They're gay. They're one ones. And one one on this scale is probably one. Well, I would say not probably is where L. Ron Hubbard plots homosexuality, the worst type of people on the planet. They should be eradicated from the place from their place in the world. So one like so that's how people use it in Scientology. She's 2.0. Oh, he's a one one. Oh, she's at body like it's crazy, you know. And then when yep. Scientologists act crazy, you know, like um Tom jumping on the couch. Um, I remember when he had done that, Mike. I went into Celebrity Center, I complained, and I said, I think Tom is really acting um, you know, out PR, which is not good PR for Scientology. And a report was written on me. And it was, again, Shane and Todd Woodruff said, he's just at 40.0 on the tone scale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fucking nuts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh <laughs> Okay, so you can see I got a big red arrow down there next to victim, which is 0 0.1, mm -hmm. like just above body death, all mm -hmm. the way around uh, hopeless, apathy, mm -hmm. undeserving, all of these terrible, terrible states. Mm -hmm. That is where victim is to be found on this tone scale. And, and this would be shown to a uh, Scientology parishioner, civilian, Sea Org member, doesn't matter, um, to them going, this is where you're at. So here's survival at 2.0 and above, and here's where you're at, being a victim of your rapist. Correct. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and the idea that um, victim, you know, you, you could sort of dismiss this and go oh well they just use the word in a slightly different way um and th this is th this is sort of a different concept oh. no the idea that something happened to you that's bad makes you a victim and victim is bad in scientology and Mike, i have ver i have further proof for you okay okay can you show me one fucking sympathetic tweet that Scientology has ever in the history of Scientology sent out to any victim of Scientology or a Scientologist? No, of, of course not. Okay. Of course not, Leah. There is no such thing. That would be, um, that would result in you being pulled in to find out why you were sympathizing with a victim. Correct. Not only that, Mike, the word reasonable, I want to go over this because you're saying like words mean different things. Sometimes Scientology means exactly what they mean, what they say, right? right? But when it comes to a word like reasonable, reason Scientologists have their own definition of what reasonable means, and it does not mean what you think it means. Reasonable right. means that you're being soft on something you shouldn't be soft on when it comes to Scientology's frame of mind. So if you're sympathizing with a Scientology victim by putting your head to the side when they're telling you a story, which I got in trouble for when I was training to be a Scientology auditor and my student, 
you know, my, my the person that I would be auditing is pretending to be a person who's receiving auditing from me. It was my supervisor, Jason Mayfield. And he was telling me this horrible story about a Scientologist. And I'm writing it all down as we do in Scientology. We're taught to take notes, right? I'm writing down and I cocked my head a little bit to the right or to the left and made a face like that, you know, like, you know, as I was listening to him and he said, flunk, like, what are you doing with your face? And I go, I'm showing like sympathy. And he's like, what the fuck are you? No, Leah, we, we don't do that. Like you're being reasonable with a victim, right? Empathizing, right. Em empathy, sympathy is all being reasonable to a Scientologist. And they right. take a hard line, like we're talking about, Mike, right? Of being a victim. And you have to have the viewpoint that a victim is not a victim. And if they are a victim, we need to make them realize that they're the cause of their own, you know, whatever happened to them. Right. Exactly. Right. And, and following along from the tone scale, Hubbard then wrote another book called Advanced Procedures and Axioms. That mm -hmm. After Science of Survival, uh, there was a book called Advanced Procedures and Axioms. And this book is pretty much entirely about the subject of how Hubbard defines the concept of responsibility. Mm -hmm. And this is another one where like reasonableness, responsibility in Scientology has a very, very um, specific uh, yeah. definition. And I'm going to show you just a little bit of the, some of this stuff is such gobbledygook, it's really hard to refer to because you have to explain so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, well, the concept just, to be you could just use a word in, in its place. Yeah, I know. Mean? Yeah, yeah. But but subsequent to that, he wrote this this uh, writing for Scientology or for Scientologists based on the principles that are contained in the advanced procedures and axioms. When one falls away from responsibility on the various dynamics, he can then become less and less able to influence those dynamics, and thus becomes a victim of them. One must have done to other dynamics those things which other dynamics seem to have the power to do to him. Therefore, one can, and it should be, be injured, one can lose control, one can become, in fact, a zero of influence and a vacuum for trouble. Now, the term dynamics here is another Scientology term, but it means the various components of life. And so if something, uh, you, if you get bitten by a dog, that is another dynamic in Scientology. That's living things as, a, as opposed to you or your family or other human beings and, and you know, yeah, like planet Earth. Just to give you an example, your first dynamic is your body, the way you look. Your second dynamic is sex, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your kids. And it's called the second dynamic. The first dynamic, third dynamic is groups, your work, anything that you belong to, which if you're a Scientologist, you belong to nothing but Scientology. So, <laughs> so, and it goes like that, like Mike's saying, then it's like, there's the animal dynamic, you know, the, the, your things, your car, your furniture, and then they have a pretend, you know, God dynamic, which is really just for PR reasons because they don't believe in any God, uh, and nor they do they respect the God that you believe in anyway. But you find that out later in Scientology. <laughs> um, but so yeah, so basically, what that says in English is is that anything that happens to you in any area of your life is your fault, and if you don't realize, like. You must have done something to have received um, that, uh, you know, knock to the teeth. Now your teeth are knocked out, you know, you, that, that's your first dynamic. So you must have done something, you know, to that dynamic for that to have happened to you. And, and, and anything that happens on any dynamic is your fault, is completely right. your fault. It's right. your responsibility, and if you don't see it that way, that you're the cause of everything, you're shit. Right. Yeah. And that is how 
real victims of real abuse and crimes are silenced, mm -hmm. are intimidated, and are I don't, I don't know what the right word is. I, I don't know if this is a Scientology word or not, but introverted. Like, they are forced to look at themselves for what they... they, they Their whole it, life. It's, it's the classic, you know, well, your, your, your dress was too short, so that's why you were assaulted. It, mm -hmm. is, it, it is that to the, to the nth degree. Mm -hmm. And I... I just want everybody really to understand this. This is a very, very real, real, real thing and a very, very real problem of ever unraveling what actually is going on in Scientology. Uh -huh. Because even when I was back, in, you know, in the hole and, you know, you, you're looking inward to try and figure out what did I do that resulted in me ending up here in Mike, this circumstance. I'm so glad you said that because those who haven't seen our show or going clear or other, you know, what's going on today, which is, you know, SPTV and everybody's doing their blogs and, you know, like everybody has like, it's amazing, right? How everybody's speaking out. Um, People still ask, like, if that was me, you know, like, you don't think Mike Rinder can take David Miscavige physically? Like, of course, he could have beaten the shit. Like, I could beat the shit out of David Miscavige. Like, it's not about, it, it was, it's what Mike is saying is that we were trained to believe, and especially Sea Org members like Mike, from an early age, from childhood, that if he is being beaten, it's because he did something to have received that, either this lifetime or another lifetime. Yep. And these transgressions that Scientology posts of you and Amy Scobie and every former high-ranking Sea Org member where you said David Miscavige is the Messiah and, you know, we have done things wrong to him that that somehow is supposed to speak to the world at large that you admitted to like that just shows you their mentality right like right. what we're talking it's about they're they're proving our point that by them posting your transgressions they're saying you see mike deserved the beatings that he received right he admitted to wanting to strangle david miscavige yep Exactly. He admitted right. to messing up uh, the airing of, uh, of, of a Scientology program on the BBC. He failed to silence John Sweeney and the BBC. So he deserved all of this. He deserved the whole. I mean, I don't know what they think they're doing when they release these <laughs> things, but like, it's, it's, yeah. It goes but, but, to what you're saying. You thought. Yeah. What did I do to deserve to be here? But even further, Mike, you were actually looking for the answer. It wasn't like you were sitting there in pity of yourself. You were going, I, you know, LRH teaches me that if I find myself here, I must have done something. So I need to find it. Like right. you were desperately trying to find the answer. Why am I being beaten? Why am I beating other people? I mean, what I don't like this doesn't make like what what did Heber do what to pull me in? And like it's it's just insanity. Yep. And 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 this mind uh messery mm -hmm. <laughs> to not use the bad term. Yeah. is what makes it so difficult to untangle this. And, you know, why when uh, an FBI agent says, well, what if we what if we went in there and told everybody that they can come with us? And I, mm -hmm. I'm like, nobody's going to go. They're no, all going to look at you like because, you're a cockroach. You just showed up here to, yeah. to try Destroy and... Destroy mankind's only hope. Right. Uh, you know, you're not going to help me. I can only help myself by uh, figuring out what I've done 
myself that causes this to happen. That you, would be the you, first message that I would send. I would say, hello, everybody of Scientology. We mean you no harm. <laughs> we do not want to destroy you. Right, exactly. We, we, are, we are of this earth, uh, <laughs> which is actually probably PT's not a good team. thing. But I would say, I, I would say, you have done nothing wrong. I need yes. to explain the law to you. Yes. Yes. And Leah, you know yeah. how many times mm -hmm. people that we had on the aftermath or, you know, that we did with Fair Game or just in our interactions outside of the media, mm -hmm. who you in particular have said that to, and uh, it has resulted in that person breaking down and being so overwhelmed with emotion that this is the first time anybody ever told me that or said that to me. It's, it's crazy. It, mm -hmm. It's like, it's almost a common denominator of every person that comes out of Scientology is that someone has to ultimately tell them you, a, you were not crazy. This mm -hmm. was nuts. Mm -hmm. B you didn't do something wrong and see you were a victim of what was done to abuse you. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's <laughs> the, the response and reaction that we have both experienced to mm -hmm. saying that to a lot of people is, mm -hmm. is very, um, it's almost hard to, think about because it's so sad it is, it is so it, it it just is heartbreaking that and, and particularly when you have children that were abused or women that were sexually abused and to see them react that way uh, is just like oh my god it's like <laughs> It's one of the it's one of the toughest things to deal with, in at least for me in in what we've been doing for these years now of trying to help victims of Scientology. Yeah, it's horrible. That's what you're saying. I mean, I remember we had Miriam and Sina on, and uh, the the detectives who came uh, said to said to them, "We believe you." We want you to know we believe, and they just broke down in their arms, crying. Yep. And, I, and I said, the reason you're getting this reaction is because they've never been told that. They've been punished that. for what happened to them as babies and children and under 18. And um, the same with the Jane Doe's and the same with all victims that we have spoken to. It is to hear, I believe you, and you did nothing wrong to have deserved what happened to you. I say that to not only Scientology victims, but to victims in mm -hmm. general. You have done nothing wrong. You didn't deserve what you got. And, and I think that's an important message that we need to continue to send. And, and, you know, even Scientologists who leave, Mike, exact, like the Jane Doe's, like all the people who have spoken out, they feel there's a piece of them in the beginning that feels they've done something wrong by speaking out. They've done something wrong by reporting the crimes to uh, law enforcement and to uh, the agencies that, that need to be reported to. There's still a piece of them that is is so indoctrinated it is in their cells right because it, it starts at a very early age right that you go against Scientology you're destroying man's only hope right yep uh, yep it takes some time to 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 come to peace with the fact that you did the right thing exactly that's yeah. exactly right Leah it mm -hmm. it it is not an overnight, no an overnight change that can occur. 
Mike, I, I was just talking to my mom about this this morning, you know, and she even said that she's like, you know, I still feel like the words or the concepts that I think with every day that are so wrong. Like my first thought is like, oh, did I pull that in? If something happens to her, right? If somebody, if a Scientologist leaves Scientology and they get sick, they immediately think to the policies of L. Ron Hubbard that say, you know, leave Scientology, speak out against Scientology, and you're going to get an awful illness. You know, Scientologists have awful illnesses. Like, right. It's, <laughs> the ones who haven't left. Scientologists <laughs> die every day of right. awful illnesses. And these are good Scientologists. I don't want anybody to ever think that we only get, you know, like they, that you did something to receive that, you know, and I don't yes. even wish, and, and I'm even talking about Scientologists in who are sick. I don't want them to be sick, but I don't want, and, and I don't want them to think that they did anything wrong because right. that's what they're, that's what they're dealing with right now. Right. If you are in Scientology and you're sick, they're putting you through all kinds of crazy bullshit that makes you believe you're getting yourself better yeah. by making you find something that you're responsible for, for your own illness. Yes. And then on top of that, if you had the unfortunate luck to be on the confidential levels of Scientology called the OT levels, you're now talking to pretended beings in your body that Scientology is saying Oh, you have a, a body being called a body thetan that's literally like a, a being, like a spiritual being inside your body that's pretending to be cancer or Alzheimer's or whatever it is. And they're actually making the person talk to that being, imaginary being that's not there. And then when they get rid of them, the person believes that they have cured themselves of the illness. I know. I know. And then, this you know what the explanation they give, Mike, when you go, well, why the fuck did blah, blah, blah die? They were on OT8. You were ready for the answer? Yes. I mean, Mike knows it, but I'll just say. They must have missed something. <laughs> so they missed a BT, a body thing that, was, that killed them? Yeah. Well, the implication of they must have missed something is yeah. that they didn't reveal all. That's yeah, that the, actually again, what like that it, means. But again, Mike, <laughs> back to it, the person's fault for not exactly. finding the body, Thetan, who was killing them. Right. That's exactly right, Leah. It's it, That's exactly right. Okay, I, I want to sort yeah. of end this because we, we don't need to beat this no, no. to okay. death. Yeah, no. but yeah. I want to sort of end this with mm. another reference from, from Mr. Hubbard that sums up right. uh, his perspective of victims. And this okay, one no. I'm just going to read. Go ahead. Because it is so over the top. Go ahead. This is uh, a Hubbard... Uh, bulletin, meaning it's the law of Scientology. He calls it technically speaking, and mm -hmm. that um, is in reference to his claims that his discoveries and writings are a technology that Science, work scientific. every time. Scientific Science. technology. They work every time. Uh, mm -hmm. As long as you do them the way he said, they work. And he says, mm -hmm. we have a whole world Full of quote victims unquote that's enough we don't have to be victims ourselves it's a scarcity we don't have to remedy new definition a Scientologist one who is not a victim we can make victims into people without q and a -ing. q and a -ing is Scientology terminology meaning question and answer without without uh, Going back and dilly forth. dallying around, yeah. messing yeah. around. We can mm -hmm. just do it. <clears throat> Historical note. The whole Christian movement is based on the victim. Compulsion of the overt act motivator sequence. That's just a, a fancy term that Hubbard invented for his description of karma. 
They won by appealing to victims. We can win by converting victims. Christianity succeeded by making people into victims. We can succeed by making victims into people. It's time the inversion turned anyway. And that really does summarize the Scientology mm -hmm. view of victims and also mm -hmm. Christianity, just for good measure. <laughs> Despite what we they were say about all religions, you can be a Christian <laughs> and a Scientologist. Yeah, but you can't be a Christian victim and a Scientologist because Scientologists are not victims <laughs> and Christians are victims. So there's a bit of a problem there. But well, for this, Hubble, yeah. yeah, that is that sort of sums up perfectly mm -hmm. the Scientology perspective on victims and why um, both Leah and I thought it was important to cover this in in some more depth and fill it flesh it out a little more so that you don't nobody is left with the misimpression that this is just a convenient uh, convenient explanation that someone came up with for why they didn't report to the authorities or that no this is an ingrained concept and thought process and hammered into every mm -hmm. Scientologist brain that that is not what you do and the consequences of doing so are dire and the consequences of doing so are not just dire because you get in trouble they're dire because you will not be able to attain spiritual freedom you will be you know you'll die a black cinder floating in space somewhere with no happiness and just uh like it's like going to hell in Scientology. The equivalent of going to hell is not being responsible for your own condition, for being a victim. That is the the bottom of the barrel as far as Scientology goes. And it is, like I said, all pervasive. And I'm and not what, gonna keep no, and what we're asking those who were victims, whether it is in Scientology or not, but specifically because we cover Scientology a lot, you know, we hope that you really take a look at your life and understand your upbringing. Um, you were victimized because anything from your uh, not a body concept, when you are a child, you are a child, you are not an old being in a little body. You are a child and people putting their hands on you and, you know, things that, that, you know, my daughter is taught, you know, that no one should be touching you where your bathing suit is. And, you know, these are not concepts that were taught to you as a child, as a Scientologist, from that to TRs, to the tone scale, to, uh, having being locked in rooms and you thinking that's an auditing <clears throat> session uh, you being put back in a chair when you're doing training routines, being bull baited with sexually explicit information. If you were an auditor uh, of Scientology and somebody told you that they had molested or hurt or done had did you know did something to another, um, these are things you need to report. These are things that you need to understand. You need to educate yourself on what is and isn't a crime. Because right. again, we did not get that education. And we ask that you stop punishing yourself for things that you were not responsible for. That is, I cannot say that enough to people, Mike, who watch or listen to us. Yes. You didn't deserve what happened to you, period. Yes. Get that through your head, get therapy, get books, read everything you can. And please start to love yourself and forgive oh. your, um, not, well, not, I don't want to say forgive. I want to, because I, for, like, I had to learn to forgive myself for thinking a certain way for so long. You know what I mean, Mike? Like, yes, I do. I do. And I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. It's not really forgive, it's yeah. like get at peace. Come, 
come to a personal understanding yes. that it's okay that this was you so crazy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, it's okay. It's okay. You're here now, but get there, right? Like, right. get there. Right, right. Anyway. All right, That's sweetheart. It. You're you're always so like you say things that make me tear up every time you do because I've heard you say it to so many people. I think about it like when you're saying those things. I think about all the times that Leah said this to this person and that person and what their reaction was. Like those moments with Miriam and like yeah. they're seared in my memory. Yeah. Those things and. Yeah. And we just got to keep going until we get to an end of this because yeah. this this sort of abuse is just, it just can't keep going on. It cannot. And with that, we will end this little episode and we will join you again for something else. Oh, by the way, mm -hmm. if you haven't got a fake Navy Davy yet. You... Yeah, and Mike, I have to say, how do you get them? But even though I think the hair is wrong and you know how particular his hair is, like it is a it's little bit of a hat, Leah. You know, He's got a little elf is, hat. You, but you would have, but it would have been amazing if the hair was up <laughs> like this. Like it would I know. Maybe next year we'll do an advance on it. You know you what? Can get it. You can get both, right? One right. with the we'll hair as per. You know, right. the recommendations of David Miscavige, how he likes his hair, and one with the hat. Okay, where do you get them, Mike? From the Aftermath Fund. Oh, the SP Shop. Just okay. just go to the SP Shop. All the funds for the fake Navy Davy go to the Aftermath Foundation, a very worthwhile cause. Mm -hmm. So get them before they sell out because they've been selling very, very fast. Oh, and that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. Yeah. Uh you know, as I said, Elf on the Shelf is so 2022. Fake Navy <laughs> Davy, that's the 23 Elf on the Shelf. That's funny, Mike. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Love you, Love you, you Lily. Love you, Mikey. <laughs>